Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I have another stressful task to do, and that is repotting and taking out some cuttings of my beautiful and one of my favorite plants, my philodendron gloriosum. So let us get started. The philodendron gloriosum, this one in particular, I have had for about a year and a half now. And during that time, I have seen this plant balloon in size. Uh, it started off with only a couple of leaves, some smaller ones, and then just started growing one after another after another. But this is a, a crawling philodendron, not a climber like most philodendron. Uh, but this is a crawler, and a crawler is a plant that crawls along the ground floor in its natural habitat, which would be tropical areas. And that is why this plant is in a long horizontal pot. You can see uh, the stem there that's growing along the ground there. And there's also a new growth point that's popping out. But because I've run out of space in this little pot, I have to repot this beautiful, beautiful plant. What I love about the Philodendron Gloriosum so much is its stunning foliage, those big velvety heart-shaped leaves uh, that have some pink when they first come out, veining, and then all of a sudden it transitions into a beautiful white silver color. This plant, though, is in desperate need of a repot, and in the process, I am also going to take some cuttings of it because I've been wanting to do that for a while. Um, so what I'm going to do is carefully, uh, and this will be the new long horizontal pot that I end up using, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using a butter knife to edge along the sides here just so I can loosen up um, the soil that it's been in. I can't believe that I have had this plant for that long and this thing has grown in size. Uh, my other philodendrons that are crawlers, like my uh, Plamenii and my Dean McDowell, those ones all had to be repotted too because they uh, just grew way too fast for their pot. And it's interesting because I didn't have those as long as I've had this plant. Um, so actually, it's coming up pretty easily. So we might be in luck for once. Are you kidding me? I will take this. Okay. So I also had some poles in here because... I was using them as support to hold up the plant. Actually, I'm gonna grab some scissors. Now that I magically have said scissors like that, I'm going to cut off uh, these little strings here that I've had attached to uh, some of these stems and uh, their foliage because I was trying to get them to stand up a little bit more properly at the time they weren't doing too well. So let me remove those first. This one doesn't actually need stickers because I just had some Velcro plant tape around it. But uh, now that those are out of the way, and I have this little plastic bag here because I feel like that's where I'm going to put the cuttings so they can um, callus over once I get them all cut up and stuff like that. Throw that up there. Okay. Now let's see if I'm going to get, be able to get this out easily. It seems like I'm going to because... Yeah, as soon as I start, wow, we look at that root system. Oh my gosh, that right there, some beautiful, healthy, big roots. I can't believe actually that they didn't crawl out of the underneath of this uh, side of this pot and they definitely needed more space because they are all squared up. So I'm gonna just try to loosen these up without injuring or harming the roots. Because again, that is like the brain of the plant here. And I also need to be able to loosen them up. So I'll be able to take some cuttings of this plant along with the roots that have developed uh, along that portion of the stem. So this might actually take a second, but you know what? Why don't we just speed things up a little bit here and get to the fun stuff. Okay, now that I've got a good handle on things, I think, <laughs> I am going to 
make a cutting in between where two of these leaves have grown along um, the stem here. And uh, I also know they have some healthy roots that have grown out too there. So this will be perfect. And I'm using clean shears that I have uh, wiped down with isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Okay, made my first cut. And now the tough part becomes is getting this part with its roots um, untangled from the rest of the plant. Let's see. Ooh, it's got some nice roots with it. Oh, I don't want to rip any of this. The stressful and anxiety driven part. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm just going to loosen that up some more and wiggle it out. And there we go. Sweet. We've got one cutting there. That's of the new leaf. And this also has um, the growth point on it as well. So that'll be good for new growth i'm gonna let it sit right there and the thing is because it already has roots i'm actually not going to have to water propagate it i'm just going to pot it up actually as soon as that one little part callus is over let me just make sure that the roots are sitting on there all comfy and stuff perfect perfect okay so i think i'm gonna do one more cutting and it'll be right here for these two leaves. Yeah, I'll do both of those instead of one individually. And so, or two individually, I should say. And I'm going to find that spot in between there, make sure I don't cut any roots. And then we're going to cut again. <laughs> there we go. And so now I'm just going to try and untangle these as best as I can. And I want to save some of this soil because it's still pretty darn good soil. Well, it's been a year and a half, so maybe I'll replace it. I'll probably just add a little bit in with the newer soil just so it has some space and some familiarity. Wow, I can't believe how long these roots have got, gotten. Whoa, okay, so we have our second cutting. And I'll push that down there. This cutting definitely has the thickest and longest roots. And then this is the original part of the plant. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let this part callus over for a little bit. And then we are just going to pop this back up into that new pot there. And we'll hopefully eventually start to see some new growth come out of it. But that's where we're at right now. And uh, I'm going to give it about, I don't know, an hour or two and see how much it calluses over and then we'll start to the whole potting process so i shall see you in literally like a second so in reality that short second was actually like two hours uh, which gave me enough time to run over to a local plant shop to pick up a plastic pot and some more potting soil because i was running out and i have three plants here to pot now granted two hours isn't enough time for uh, those cuttings to callus over, to harden over. But um, you know what? <clears throat> I also have to keep in mind here that we have live roots and I need to pop these up. So I did put some copper fungicide on the cutting part. So that should be good for it. Um, what we're going to do, and this is interesting. So I'm going to reuse this little pot for one of the cuttings. I'm going to use this other um, longer pot for a larger part of the plant, um, the mother part of the plant, I should say. But I am going to use this clear pot that is not a long pot, but I've also wanted to grow a plant inside of a clear pot just so I can see its roots grow, uh, and then I'll probably cover it up with something. But what I'll end up doing is that once the uh, plant that is potted up in here actually starts growing some new foliage, 
on some new stems probably by midsummer i would assume at this point um i will then transfer it over to a horizontal pot so all will be well in the world at least that is what i am telling myself right now <clears throat> so i think what we're going to do is we are going to pot up this baby here the mother plant inside this lechuza um, pot and this is a really great uh, vertical pot you can find obviously like cheaper ones at your little um, home depot or lowe's um, like plastic planters basically that you would put out uh, with your outdoor plants and you can use them for that but uh, what i like about these ones in particular um, is that they have a lot of uh, breathing room down below. In fact, there's so many little holes in the bottom. It's great because the plant's roots will just be able to breathe right through that, uh, which is what these kinds of aeroids, aeroid, araceae being the family of plant, uh, want. So, let's see. I don't think I'm actually going to use any of the old soil. Um, <clears throat> I did notice that I ended up accidentally cutting off a few roots, but... Uh, they're just little parts of the root. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take, this is the mother part of the plant. This is the um, first actual four or five leaves that I had when I got this plant. Um, at least the ones that were left over. One of them or two of them hadn't died. But yeah, really small leaves and really big roots though. And so I want to use the bigger pot because it's going to have the most space. But like I said, I'm going to put some rooting hormone powder on these roots to help it with a smooth transition over to its new pot and new soil. And I'll get this side as well. Um, I, I don't know why, but I mean, and I don't know the science behind rooting hormone powder. I know that it's written on the side of the thing, and I've read it several times, and I still don't understand. I just have a lot of luck with potting up cuttings or even um, repotting just plants in general by put it, pouring some of this uh, hormone powder on its roots. And uh, I'll tell you what, I don't think there's been a plant that I have potted up um, on purpose within the last couple of years that I haven't used that powder with. Um, and it has worked like a charm. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this massive root system down inside of here and hopefully it'll compact in and I'm probably, no, I already know for a fact I'm going to have to repop this one again probably by the end of summer because <laughs> there's not even though this is like maybe four inches longer than its original pot there's still not a lot of space in here um that's left over and this plant has really healthy roots so here's hoping we shall always hope right okay so with crawling philodendron again crawling philodendron being like this one the philodendron Gloriosum. They like to crawl along the uh, jungle and, tr and tropical floors. So it is going to grow in this direction. What I'm going to do is try to fill up some uh, soil around its sides. And I'm glad I had a chance to get to the plants or to get some more of this soil mix because I would have been not been able to pot up all three of these plants. Um, so one thing that is very important with crawling philodendron when you are potting them up is the fact that you do need to leave space at the top for like its stem here to um, continue to be above the soil just a tad bit. That's because uh, the new foliage will come out of the front or off of the side and it'll look to crawl on the top part and bury its roots, obviously, deep down inside the soil. So keep that in mind. Don't cover it up when you are um, potting up or repotting a crawling philodendron because that is crucial to its success. All right. I'm just going to try to heck some soil around the side. 
thing is, this thing started even like growing aerial roots on the side. It was doing, obviously, based off of the roots that you guys have seen, it was doing really well and will hopefully continue to do well. Um, and so what I'm doing right now is I'm just shaking this up just so um, it can, the soil the potting mix can get in between its roots that are down below. Um, just because it's like they were, they were, I couldn't untangle all of them. I mean, you guys saw them. There were hundreds of roots wrapped around each other. And uh, that would just be too impossible to untangle without causing damage to the roots. So by shaking up the soil, once it gets inside there, it can kind of like slip in between the roots, you know. And so that'll give it um, a little bit more oil or potting mix rather to play around with and I think as soon as I get this part done let's see there oh, maybe just a little bit more soil which will be good because it'll help way down this side too and proposition the plant up in a healthier and better way. I'm just going to clear off that stem like I was telling you guys about. And then we shall see, but we are near having one plant potted, which is great. Yay! Okay. So now that we have that, I'm going to give this guy some water and then we will start with our second cutting. And take a look at that. Our first cutting all potted up. Just looks beautiful. I love those Lechuza uh, pots because you can actually take out the inside, which is where the plant is actually potted up in, water it, let the water drain through, and then put it back inside its cover. It's really kind of neat. Uh, so now we're moving on to the second cutting. And for that one, we're using the old pot that it first lived in, but we're gonna give it some fresh soil. And we're just going to repeat what we just did. We are going to use some rooting hormone powder. And then we are going to pot it up. And I have to say, you know, for this being the uh, two latest leaves, they did grow some rather large and long roots rather quickly. Uh, so again, rooting hormone powder for good luck. Da, 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 da. At least that's what I tell myself. Uh, I'm curious to know if any of you know the science behind rooting hormone powder and what your luck rate has been with it. Um, I'm just curious, so leave it in the comments below. Okay, so we're going to set it in. Get that long root in there. They look like long pieces of spaghetti or something. Uh, and then we are going to place it down in there. Oops, these roots are too long. I don't want them to like get bundled up in a bad way. There we go. That's much better. Okay, perfect. Perfecto. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit more rooting hormone powder on there. Da, 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 da. And that's for good luck. <laughs> okay, so now we just have to repeat the same process of putting in some more soil. Actually, I'm going to be a little bit smarter here. At least I hope so. <laughs> I am going to pour it this way. Watch me like miss the entire pot and I just pour it all over that black mat. That would actually be really great. <laughs> At least I got some on the floor there. Okay. Cool. And now we shall use our hands. So first let's do the little mix around just so we get it around some of those roots in there. All right. That actually really helped a lot because it revealed some roots, which means that it got in behind the others. Get some up there. You have no idea how often throughout the week I am not only sweeping, but swiffering which are actually two of my favorite things to do ever. I love swiffering. 
And actually, I take that back. I don't love sweeping, um, but I do enjoy. I do enjoy it. I love vacuuming since I was a kid. I love vacuum cleaners. In fact, one of my earliest birthday gifts when my mom and I were just talking about this uh, the other day was a vacuum cleaner because I'm obsessed with vacuuming. That's right. Outside of plants, my other hobbies include vacuuming. I'm a very interesting person. <laughs> All right. So like before, we are going to keep um, the growth point facing out. Obviously, we don't want to bury that because it needs sunlight so it can uh, start to um, grow. But also, we want to keep it above the soil line as well. And so... There we go. And you can see we are now ready to water this one and move on to our third and final one. Well, congratulations. You have made it to the final potting up and it is going to be this cutting here. And uh, it's just good because I think this might be it for soil as well. Uh, so it's a good time to call it quits, I guess. We are going to not be using a long pot like we should be. Um, but I've wanted to experiment with um, these big, larger clear pots because I'm curious to see how this plant's roots will develop over time. Um, mind you, they are really large roots right now, so it's probably going to be midsummer when I have to pot repot this guy up again. Um, so that's what we're going to do is we are going to give it a little rooting hormone powder like the others. Let me just get those spaghetti noodles in there and coat them with some rooting hormone powder because it apparently helps. That's been my success with it. I have experienced it, I will say. <laughs> it is true, I think, unless it's just good luck or I'm doing something right, which is really never the case. So let's see. Let me get a little bit more in there. Maybe be on those callus points, too. I guess it doesn't really matter which direction I end up placing this plant in because it's really not going to have any room to crawl along the uh, ground in here. But like I said, by, I guarantee you, July, if not before, actually I'd say late June, I am going to be repotting this guy up, but it'll be in a... Um, It'll be in a long pot. So that's what it wants. It's not probably happy with me right now putting its <laughs> roots together like they're one big mess. I should actually make an attempt here to not try to bend them. Let's see. What would be best? What if we did it? Ooh, there we go. Maybe they're kind of like circling around each other. We'll get her, assuming that it will be in place still, to about right there. And I want those roots to be tucked down as much as they can. And, oh, that's so cool, being able to kind of see the process through this clear pot. I'm really glad that I'm giving this a shot because normally I'd be so freaked out, but I'm like, you know what? I've got three cuttings now. Why not experiment with one? Even though this one happens to be my favorite foliage on the plant. <laughs> okay, so let's fill this up. Shake it around. And remember, I want to be able to see the stem of the plant so it can grow. There we go. Perfect. Just have to tuck a little root underneath there that's trying to pop up here. <laughs> you would think that actually that's probably a good problem to have given the fact that you know most plants usually they don't have really big roots, aren't probably going to be very healthy plants, but I guess it's a blessing in disguise, even though they're trying to pop up everywhere like aerial roots. Okay. Let me show that side. And also 
this side. I need to bring this up just a little. And excellent. Just going to cover up these parts here where some roots are trying to emerge again. There we go. This is how I talk to myself when I'm doing plant chores. Even if you guys weren't watching, I would still be doing this. Uh, FYI. <laughs> okay. Well, folks, I do believe we have ourselves a third and final plant. Now to water it. And just like that, we now have three new plants. Take a look at these beautiful philodendron gloriosums. They're each in their own separate pot. That clear pot I ended up putting in a decorative little uh, bucket there. But all three of these plants should start growing, having new growth points probably in the next, I would say, month and a half, two months or so. But I'm excited because I've needed to chop this plant up for a while and I've been wanting to chop it up to make uh, separate propagations of it. So it is one of my favorite philodendrons uh, and it is so beautiful. But hey, thanks again so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so for more fun planty content just like this. I'll see you guys in the next video.